the next sutta is 3.8.80. Now the Venerable Ananda went to see the Exalted One, paid respect, etc., and sat to one side. As he sat to one side, he said this to the Lord, to the uh, Bhagawa Exalted One. In the presence of the Exalted One, Lord, in his very presence, I have received this saying, Ananda, Abibu, the disciple of the Buddha Sikkin, standing in the Brahma world, could make its thousand realms hear his voice. Pray, Lord, how far can the Arahan, the fully enlightened one, make his voice heard? And the Buddha said, He was just a disciple, Ananda. Immeasurable are the Tathagatas. That means the Buddhas. Eh? Then a second time, and yet a third time, the Venerable Ananda put the question. Then the Exalted One answered, Have you ever heard, Ananda, of the system of the small thousandfold worlds? And Ananda said, Now is the time for this, O Exalted One. Now is the time for this, O Welfarer, Sugata, for the Exalted One to speak. Hearing the Exalted One, the monks were bear in mind. And the Buddha said, Then, Ananda, do you listen? Attend closely and I will speak. I will, Lord, replied the Venerable Ananda to the Exalted One. And the Buddha said, As far as the moon and sun move in their course and light up all quarters with their radiance, so far extends the thousandfold world system. Therein are a thousand moons, a thousand suns, a a thousand Sumerus, lords of mountains, a thousand Jambudipas, a thousand Aparaguyanas, a thousand Uttarakurus, a thousand Pubavidehas, four thousand mighty oceans, four thousand mighty rulers, a thousand four great rulers, a thousand heavens of the thirty-three, a thousand Yama heavens, a thousand heavens of the Tusita Devas, a thousand heavens of the Devas that delight in creation, a thousand heavens of those Devas that delight in others' creations, a thousand Brahma heavens. This Ananda is called the system of the small thousandfold worlds. A system a thousandfold the size of this is called the medium thousand thousandfold world system. A a system a thousandfold the size of this is called the great thousand thousand thousandfold world system. Now Ananda, if he wished it, the Tathagata could make his voice heard throughout this last named world system, or even further if he chose. And Ananda said, Pray Lord, how could that be done? And the Buddha said, In this connection, Ananda, the Tathagata suffuses with radiance the great thousand thousand thousandfold world system. When its inhabitants perceive this, then the Tathagata would give out utterance and make the sound heard. That is how he would do it. At these words, the Venerable Ananda exclaimed to the Venerable Udayan, It is indeed a gain for me, well gotten indeed by me it is that my teacher is of such mighty power and majesty. Whereupon the Venerable Udayan said to the Venerable Ananda, What is it to you, Reverend Ahusho, Ananda? that your teacher should be of such mighty power and majesty. At these words the exalted one said to the venerable Udayan, Say not so, Udayan, say not so, Udayan. If Ananda were to make an end without attaining perfect freedom from passion, yet by virtue of his heart of faith, he would seven times win rule among the devas. Seven times would he win rule in this rose apple land, Jabuddipa. However, Udayan, in this very life, Ananda shall attain to final passing away. Uh, this is uh, quite an interesting sutta huh, where the Buddha quoted uh, the previous Buddha, Buddha Sikin, uh, Buddha Sikin in the in some sutta, the Buddha mentioned that he contemplated 91 world cycles, uh, the past 91 world cycles, and he saw six Buddhas, uh, 91 world cycles, aeons, uh, which is such a long time. Uh, he only found six Buddhas, and one and one of those uh, was the Buddha Sikkin, uh, and he had a disciple, Abhibhu. Uh, there's a, another sutta uh, about this uh, incident uh, where the... A disciple, Abibu, uh, he spoke a few verses and a thousand world systems could hear his voice. Eh? And yet the Buddha says that uh, he was just a disciple compared to the Buddhas. Eh? 
and the Buddhas can uh, make the voice heard over a long distance. Lah. But I think uh, I've seen one of the suttas where the Buddha said that not all Buddhas are the same. Uh, so in this case, our Buddha is just quoting himself. Lah. Uh, and first he talked about the thousandfold world system. Lah. And it is mentioned somewhere else lah, that a world system consists of a sun. Every world system consists of a sun, lah, what we call a star. And around that sun uh, are supposed to be four continents. Four continents, those uh, those names I mentioned just now. Uh, Jambudipa is on the south. Then Aparagoyana, then Uttarakuru, and Puba Videha. And then you have Mount Sumeru is supposed to be uh, a mountain. Uh. Maybe this is uh, this mountain, uh, so far we don't see it around here. It might be one of those uh, fine material uh, worlds, uh, it's just like a spirit world. There are a lot of spirits around, but uh, very few people can see them. And then uh, <clears throat> the other heavens were mentioned. Now this thousandfold, thousandfold world system uh, uh, could be something like a galaxy. And the Buddha mentioned somewhere uh, about, the, there's a term the Buddha used, Chakravala. Chakravala. Chakra is a, is a disc. It's a disc, and we know a disc is flat. And nowadays, uh, they, they realize uh, that a galaxy uh, is flat like a disc. Uh, and so the Buddha said uh, he could make his voice heard over such a great uh, distance. Uh. So this is one uh, instance uh, you see. Uh, even uh, Arahan, disciple of a Buddha, uh, can have such a mighty psychic power. Uh, but just speaking normally, uh, he could make his voice heard over a thousand world systems. Uh. Uh, the other thing about this sutta is uh, the Buddha said that Ananda's great faith in the Buddha can make him seven times the king of the devas. I think that's Saka Deva Raja, king of the uh, 33 heavens, Tavatimsa heaven. Said, uh, and um, it's only, there's some uh, some later books only say uh, when you have faith in the Buddha that you can get out of samsara. Actually, it's not uh, just having faith uh, like this uh, can make you reborn into a heavenly world. But if you have unshakable faith uh, uh, in the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha plus virtue, then the Buddha said you have uh, attained the, the way, the uh, first uh, path. Uh. And also the other thing about this sutta is you find that the Buddha made a prediction here that Ananda will attain to arahanhood in this very life. Uh. This was said, the Brahmin student Subha, to dear son, said to the Blessed One, Master Gotama, I've heard that the recluse Gotama knows the path to the company of Brahma. Uh, stop here for a moment. So here, early you see, huh, he is uh, saying what the Brahmins believe huh, and trying to uh, make the point huh, that what the Brahmins say huh, is correct. Huh. And now, he uh, he's asking the, the, the Buddha, he wants to learn from the Buddha now. Uh, now he stopped uh, debating with the Buddha. And this was said, the Brahmin, uh, uh, so he is asking uh, the Buddha to teach him the path to the company of Brahma. What do you think, student? Is the village of Nalakara near here, not far from here? Yes, sir. The village of Nalakara is near here, not far from here. What do you think, student? Suppose there was a man born and raised in the village of Nalakara, and as soon as he had left Nalakara, they asked him about the path to the village. Would that man be slow or hesitant in answering? No, Master Gotama. Why is that? Because that man has been born and raised in Nalakara, and is well acquainted with all the paths to the village. Still, a man born and raised in the village of Nalakara might be slow or hesitant in answering when asked about the path to the village. But the Tathagata, when asked about the Brahma world, or the way leading to the Brahma world, would never be slow or hesitant in answering. I understand Brahma, student, and I understand the Brahma world. And I understand the way leading to the Brahma world. And I understand how one should practice to, a re to reappear in the Brahma world. Master Gotama, I have heard that the recluse Gotama teaches the path to the company of Brahma. It would be good if Master Gotama would teach me the path to the company of Brahma. 
Then student, listen and attend closely to what I shall say. Yes, sir, he replied. Mm-hmm. So you see here, the Buddha makes him request twice. Huh? Then only the Buddha has, uh, will teach him. The Blessed One said, What student is the path to the company of Brahma? Here a monk abides pervading one quarter with a mind imbued with loving kindness. Likewise the second, likewise the third, likewise the fourth. So above, below, around and everywhere. And to all as to himself, he abides pervading the all-encompassing world with a mind imbued with loving kindness, abundant, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility and without ill will. When the liberation by mind of loving kindness is developed in this way, no limiting action remains there, none persists. Just as a vigorous trumpeter could make himself heard without difficulty in the four quarters, so too, when the liberation by mind of loving kindness is developed in this way, no limiting action remains there, none persists there. This this is the path to the company of Brahma. Again, the monk provides pervading one quarter with a mind imbued with compassion, with a mind imbued with joy, with a mind imbued with equanimity. Likewise the second, likewise the third, likewise the fourth quarter. So above, below, around and everywhere to all as to himself he abides pervading the all-encompassing world with a mind imbued with equanimity abundant exalted immeasurable without hostility and without ill will when the liberation by mind of equanimity is developed in this way no limiting action remains there none persists there just as a vigorous trumpeter could make himself heard without difficulty in the four quarters so too, when the liberation by mind of equanimity is developed in this way, no limiting action remains there, none persists there. This too is the path to the company of Brahma. And this was said, the Brahmin student Subha, today's son, said to the Blessed One, Magnificent Master Gautama, Magnificent Master Gautama. Master Gautama has made the Dhamma clear in many ways, as though he were turning upright what had been overturned revealing what was hidden, showing the way to one who was lost, or holding up a lamb in the dark for those with eyesight to see forms. I go to Master Gotama for refuge and to the Dhamma and to the Sangha of monks. Let Master Gotama remember me as a lay follower who has gone to him for refuge for life. Amen.